Hey, how you guys doing? Uh, it's Monday morning, and I want to try something a little different today. Uh, as a church family, as a ministry with our ABM partners, uh, we're reading through the Bible a chapter a day. And uh, today I wanted to just kind of share with you a few things I got from Luke chapter 8, because uh, that was today's reading. And I figured it's something I would try out, and maybe this helps somebody, maybe it doesn't. So if you want to get your Bible out real quickly, so you can follow along for a few minutes, by all means, do so. Um, so in Luke chapter 8, there's a few things that jumps out at me. I will mention that, of course, it starts off with Jesus going around preaching the gospel. Uh, the Bible mentions women that he had helped deliver from diseases and demon spirits, uh, following along with them and supporting them financially. He tells the story of the parable of the sower, uh, and then it gets into the point of that, meaning, you know, uh, you need to give the word of God attention. He talks about who his true family is. Then he calms a storm. Then he heals a demon possessed man. Then he heals the woman with the issue of blood and raises Jairus' daughter from the dead. So all of this happened in this one chapter. I was reading today going, gee, there's a lot going on in this chapter. So uh, obviously you could preach this chapter for probably weeks. But there was a couple things that jumped out at me today um, that maybe can help somebody. Uh, the first thing that jumped out to me in my own time was Jesus talking about giving a parable of the sower. And he talks about three groups of people who heard the word of God. And the first group, the Bible talks about the fact that very simply uh, the word didn't do anything for them. That Satan came and immediately scooped it up, uh, took it out of their heart so that they couldn't be saved. Uh, people who are hard-hearted to the things of God, period. Uh, you know, so they don't believe in God. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't want nothing to do with serving God. All of that. The second group are those who do believe in God. So they hear the word of God and they believe it, man. They're excited about it. But eventually, because they haven't taken the time to cause it to be rooted in their hearts, the word that was planted in their hearts is uprooted uh, by trouble coming their way. And them being discouraged by them being offended at God or other people. So we've you've heard that talk before. But what jumped out of me today was a third group where the Bible talks about the seed fell among thorns in verse 14. And I'm reading a New Living Translation. And it says that all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. And so they never grow into maturity. And it occurred to me today, I think it's a lot of Christians that go to church is that we hear the word of God, we believe it, it's even kind of rooted in our hearts, but it's not actually, sorry about that, somebody tried to call, it's not actually that important to us. Uh, it's not the priority that it should be. So we allow other things in this life to kind of crowd it out. Instead of treating it like it's one in a million, we treat it like it's one in a many. Nobody in dating wants to be treated like they're one in a many. You want somebody to think you're one in a million. And we do that with the word. So the word is right next to Netflix. The word is right next to sports. The word is right next to my favorite fashions. The word. So it's not given the priority that it should be given in our lives. And so we never actually grow up and never produces like it should. And so it just made me think, OK, am I really prioritizing the word? I mean, that's kind of what why we're going through the Bible every day. Right. Um, we're talking about this on Sunday mornings. Just did it yesterday in terms of. You know, living our life in the word. Am I treating the word uh, as, like I should? Do I realize wisdom is the principal thing? It's the best, the most important thing you could ever do is get wisdom and get understanding because that will give you everything else uh, in this life. That's clearly a group that didn't do that. So, of course, Luke chapter 8 and verse 18 then goes on to talk about the point of this, which is God gives us the word of God. So that we can get understanding, so that it can change our lives, so that the wisdom of God can give us peace and, and long life and health and, and prosperity. And it can be a tree of life to us. But just because he's given it to you doesn't mean just because you hear it doesn't mean it's going to do those things in your life. If you don't prioritize it, if you don't do what verse 18 says, pay attention to how you hear. Because to those who listen to my teaching, and the idea here is to truly listen, give your full attention to it more understanding will be given. In fact, I love how verse 15 says about the group that does see the word produce a huge harvest in their lives because it's supposed to. They cling to God's word.
man, it's like we do to our phones, right? We cling to that thing. I can't lose that or the AirPods. You know, I lost my AirPods recently and I was like, how is this possible? I cling to this thing. And that's how we are with the word. And those who, when the word comes, truly listen. And when they read their Bible, truly try to get something out of it and hold on to it. Those are the ones that get understanding and then God gives you even more. So that's what jumped out at me. There are a couple other things here. And I, I and just trying this, I'm kind of like, I'm trying not to preach a whole Bible, the Bible here, but there were a couple of things that jumped out of my prayer time today. And um, one of them was, of course, when Jesus ran into the, the madman of Gadara, man possessed with demon spirits, man, it was obvious who was in charge. They begged repeatedly, repeatedly begged, 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 don't, don't send this to the bottomless pit. Uh, which tells me that that's a place that even demons don't want to be. So you don't want to be there. So you better follow Jesus if you're not doing so right now. They begged him to uh, not torture them, to put, to allow them to go into pigs. They knew who was in charge. And so did he. And you know what? When you come against them in his name, you're in charge too. The only reason why they're encroaching on you like they are is because you don't realize who you are and what you have. So use your authority. They're begging. God, they're begging. They're hoping that you don't figure out that... Yeah, they have no right. Satan has no right in your body, your money, your finances, your ministry, your business. Use your authority. Something else that jumped out at me because I kind of got a hit was, you know, we find them on the water. Right. And, you know, Jesus says, let's go to the other side. They go to the other side. A storm shows up and the boat starts to fill with water and his disciples get offended at him. They wake him up. You know, don't you care that we're drowning? He gets up and he rebukes the wind and the waves and they obey. And then he says, you know, where's your faith? Right. So, you know, I read that and I go, man, where's your faith? You know, but well, he said, let's go to the other side. You should believe that. But what jumped out of me today was they were amazed. And they said, who is this man that when he gives a command, even the winds and waves obey him? And, you know, when we read that as Christians, we kind of go, yeah, well, duh, you were with Jesus, man. What do you think? But actually put yourself there. Put yourself there. This man got up and literally spoke to the wind and the waves and they obeyed. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie. It's like, you know, us getting up and speaking to the snow in Michigan. I wish we could. Right. Saying, get out of here, son. Come over here. <laughs> That's kind of what's happening here, man. Um, no wonder they were so amazed at him. The last thing is going back to when that demon spirit was, uh, well, those demons were cast out of that man. The Bible says that the men that own the pigs that the demons went into, and of course, we know the story, the demons then caused the pigs to go drown. They immediately ran and told everybody about what had happened. The town came out and they saw Jesus. They saw this man who had been, you know, demon possessed, had been miserable and yet had demonic power. You know, they would put shackles on him and on him and he just break out of him and run back into the wilderness. So I'm sitting there in his right mind. And they were scared and they begged Jesus to leave. So they had one faith experience and that was enough for them. They were terrified. Instead of saying, hey, we want more. Who are you? Tell us what we need to do to get closer to God. Any of that. They begged Jesus to leave. Then he does. God's not going to force himself on you. So then he goes to the other side and there the people welcomed him. They were waiting for him. They welcomed him. They thronged him. This is when a woman of the issue of blood had her experience and they received his miracles. She, out of the midst of chaos, was able to receive her miracle. And you can receive your miracle in the middle of chaos. Jairus was told, even though the world said that your situation is dead, it is over. This is already it's past tense. Jesus said, be not afraid, only believe. And Jairus did it. And he received the miracle. His daughter was raised from the dead because they welcomed him. So what are you going to do today? Are you going to beg him to leave your life? Do you want to do your own thing? Be your own God? You don't want to have to live right, be right, do right, go to church. You don't want to have to be accountable for your actions and therefore do without God's help? Or are you going to be the person that says, I want you, Jesus. I want you in my life. I want to give you my life. I want everything you have for me. I'm going to throng you. I'm going to chase you. I'm going to do everything I can do to be who you want me to be, to have my miracle in the midst of my chaos, to have my 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 un, my impossible situation turn into a I'm possible situation where you show up and do great things in my life. So 
just wanted to share that with you guys. I hope it helps somebody. I don't know how often I do this, but I thought about it from time to time when I read my chapter. Why don't I just go live and talk about what I read today? So Luke chapter eight today, you can check up. You can see all of our, our, our Bible readings, uh, our whole schedule for the month on my on social media page. Same with, with FX Church as well. All right. Love you guys. Know that God is future for you.